Hello and welcome to Study History with Mr P and my Anglo-Saxon Crime, Punishment and Law Enforcement Recall Quiz. So you may wish to grab a pen and a piece of paper or screenshot the next slides. I'm going to go through a series of questions, read out each question and then go through the answers at the end of the quiz. Also look at, at the end for a bonus revision task. So as you can see on this slide there are 20 recall quiz questions about crime punishment and law enforcement under the Anglo-Saxon. So I'm going to read through each question. You may wish to pause at the end of this section to note down your answers before moving on. So in the year 1000, what was the population of England? What percentage of people lived in the countryside at this time? What problems did communities face in Anglo-Saxon England? And who A made the law and B enforced it? What institution was an important influence? What three trends were there in Anglo-Saxon England that were important to crime and punishment? What was significant about the rule of King Ethelred? Why did the role of the king increase over time? Who did the king rely on to help him keep the peace? What were the four main groups in Anglo-Saxon society? Why were nobles important? What was the worst crime in Anglo-Saxon England and what does it mean? Name three towns that were growing during Anglo-Saxon times. What's the difference between a crime against the person and a crime against property? Why was it easy to catch criminals in Anglo-Saxon times? What is collective responsibility? What is a reeve? What was found in around 1000 that communities grew around? What is a moral crime and why was the church powerful? So you have 20 questions there and I'm very aware that I went through those very quickly. So you may wish to pause this video to give yourself a time, a bit of time to answer these questions before I reveal them. I'm going to move on to the answers now. Hopefully you've had a chance to pause the quiz and record the answers that you can. So around the year 1000, the population of England was between 1.7 and 2 million. At this time, 90% of people lived in the countryside. And the problems that communities faced in Anglo-Saxon England was that they were vulnerable to the effects of warfare, weather, bad harvests and diseases. The law was made by the king and the nobility but it was the village community and families that enforced it in most cases. The church was an important institution during this time. And the three trends important to crime and punishment in Anglo-Saxon times was that the role of the king and the role of the church increased and the use of punishments increased. King Ethelred's rule in Anglo-Saxon times is important because he gained more control over, over England. And this is really important to our study of Anglo-Saxon England from around the year 1060 under King Edward the Confessor. So what, why or how did the role of the king increase over time? Well, their authority and their territory increased. The king had relied upon advisors to help him keep the peace. Four main groups in Anglo-Saxon society was the king, nobles, freemen and peasants or serfs. Nobles were important because they had a role in backing laws. And the most important crime or the worst crime in Anglo-Saxon times was treason, so betraying the king. Three grand towns were Hamwick or Southampton, Etherwick, York and Rudenwick, London. A crime against a person means harm in a person. A crime against the property means taking or damaging something belonging to somebody. Now, it was relatively easy to catch criminals in Anglo-Saxon times because most people lived in villages and knew each other. Which is where collective responsibility comes in. This is being responsible for the actions of others in your group. A reeve was a local official appointed from the community. And abbeys were founded around the year 1000 around which communities grew. A moral crime is a crime that does not match society's values or decent behaviour. And the church was powerful because it had responsibility to stop immoral crimes. So, those are the main questions for the quiz, but there is a bonus task coming up now. So you may wish to pause the video and check you've got all your answers noted down. When you've done so, 
let the video play on and there's a bonus matching task with some key terms and their meanings. So are we ready? So we've got four key words here, corporal punishment, capital punishment, retribution and deterrence. Which one matches to which key meanings? This will stay on screen for a few seconds. You may wish to pause it. I will then reveal the correct answers in a moment. So here we go. So corporal punishment well, are a range of punishments that cause harm or pain to the body. Capital punishments refer to punishments that are the death penalty. Retribution is a severe punishment meant to match the severity of the crime. So literally almost getting your own back, making somebody pay. And a deterrent is a punishment that's frightening or painful and is designed to put others off from committing the same crime. So well done for giving this a go. You may wish to replay this to check you've got all your answers. <laughs> 